and he says that the situation is under control and the country is safe. George Musamali, security analyst, are you convinced? As far as we go right now, I'm not convinced because you see that the operation is still ongoing. We still have people trapped into that building. Uh, we can only say that we are clear once everybody has been rescued. Here we are looking at a situation that might turn out to be a hostage situation, though Al-Shabaab are not known to take hostages. Mm -hmm. uh, in most of the attacks that we've seen them carry out, they normally go in with one purpose, kill and mine. Mm -hmm. So what is happening right now is uh, exactly what we thought will happen. And I believe that uh, more efforts should be made. We should mm -hmm. have a quick resolution to this problem. Mm -hmm. Because right now Kenyans are unaware of how many people are still trapped into that building. And we have families out there who are agonizing about their loved ones. Right. So I believe uh, something more should be done. And uh, the statement that is coming from this government should be a statement that will reassure the people that something is being done to actually rescue mm -hmm. the people that are still trapped into the building. Mm -hmm. Not telling us that all has been done and it's a mopping up operation, mm -hmm. whereas we still have the attackers inside there. We've not been told that they have been, uh, uh, they have been neutralized. Uh, we've not been told how many they are. Uh, it's, we are just still going back to Westgate, where okay. information was coming in that we could not add up. Okay, and, and of course, according to the government so far, is that uh, this is a suspected terror attack. Um, at what point do we decide that this is actually a terror attack? Uh, I think we should have decided that a long time ago, because uh, the Gaza group from Kayole cannot cut out such an attack. The weaponry deployed there, for example, they cannot access, they cannot be able to... Uh, have suicide bombers within mm -hmm. that attack. So we can't call it a criminal attack per se because uh, it has all the hallmarks of a, of a terrorist group attack. Mm -hmm. The capacity that was deployed there and the planning, because remember, some this is not something that can ha just happen today. It's something that has been planned for a very, very long time. Uh, you see, we have five stages before a terror attack and the first stage is always target identification and look at the target that was identified. Uh, from target identification, you go to stage number two, and stage number two is uh, target surveillance, collection of information, collection of intel about the security uh, at, the, uh, at, at the site that has been identified, mm -hmm. uh, how these guys are going to carry out the attack, uh, the gaps they have, uh, they, they, they have witnessed in the security. Uh, after they have collected all this information, this is when now they go to stage number three, the planning stage. And if you look at all these attacks, mm -hmm. the moment we get to stage number three, we've lost it. 99.9% .9 of attacks that have been carried out at, after stage number three have always been successful. Mm -hmm. So we are supposed to have, I, uh, are supposed to have seen indicators mm -hmm. at stage number two because I had an eyewitness saying that he had seen that vehicle there four right. times. Mm. So clearly, there is a gap between uh, uh, collection of intelligence and dissemination of this intelligence. And also, you will find that we are not using uh, the cheapest and most effective tool in fighting terrorism. That is popular intelligence. Intelligence from members of the public. Mm. Have we incorporated, incorporated them in our security system? Are we getting information that can assist the security agencies fight terrorism? Because if this person was suspicious, having seen this vehicle here four times, he should have shared this information with the security uh, agencies mm -hmm. and probably this attack could have been averted. That right. is not happening. You went up to stage three. I was waiting for stage four and five after planning. Uh, after planning, we go to stage number four. Stage number four is carrying out the attack. Mm -hmm. And stage number five is escape because they also plan their escape. Mm -hmm. Remember Westgate, we were, some people told us that uh, the attackers might have left the premises. And even right now, as we're still grappling with this uh, current attack, there's a high possibility that some of these attackers might have already left the premises because they plan their attacks meticulously mm -hmm. and they know that at some point, if they're not suicide bombers, mm -hmm. they will need to get out. Okay. And from experience, as I've said, mm -hmm. We get to stage number two, this is when these people expose themselves. Mm. You will see them around the premises, they will be taking pictures at the site, they will be interviewing people at the site, they will be observing the security, the way the barriers are opened, the security checks. And you see, if we have surveillance officers, people trained mm. in surveillance, mm -hmm. counter surveillance, they can be able to pick up these people very quickly right. and then make informed uh, decisions. Mm. And this seems not to have happened here because they were able to get to stage number two and then move to stage number three and four. So I even as the security forces say that uh, they have contained um, the situation at the building and they, na they have now narrowed down and uh, remaining on one floor where they believe the attackers are still uh, hiding, 
Is it a possibility that these attackers have already executed stage five or they're still there? There's a very high possibility because we're just hearing about explosions, we're hearing about gun, uh, gunshots, and probably because we are told that uh, they had booby trapped the premises, probably these uh, explosions are coming from the police detonating mm -hmm. what had already been set. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. chances are mm -hmm. we might be looking for people who have already left the premises. Mm -hmm. Because as I've said, this is a well-planned and calculated attack from the way we see it. Right. Someone is saying that um, most of the time that these guys, when they get into such a, a target to attack, they are ready to die. So their focus is really not on stage it, five. It, it all depends. It all depends on who is actually carrying out the attack and what is their motive. So, uh, so remember, at Westgate, mm -hmm. we, we never know the number of attackers. We've never been told the number of attackers, and we've never been told their fate. As I've said, there's a high possibility they left the premises. Mm -hmm. And even in this particular scenario, we, the one we are witnessing right now, mm -hmm. there's also a high possibility that they might have left the place. Remember, we have different types of attackers. Okay. We have attackers who are suicide bombers. Mm -hmm. These are people that are ready to die. Mm -hmm. We have others that are not suicide bombers. These are people who, are just, who just get in, carry out the attack. They have planned how they are going to escape. Remember the American embassy attack. One of the attackers actually left the premises and was arrested in Pakistan. So we are looking at a similar situation here. There's a high possibility that these are people that are not ready to attack, and they might have planned uh, their attack knowing very well there's an escape route. Mm -hmm. From pre-surveillance, they know the layout of the building, they know the entrances, they know the exits, and they might have ex executed that already, but right. we can't speculate. Right. When you look at uh, what happened um, with the Westgate Mall on September 21st of uh, 2013 and then on April 2nd, 2015 with Garissa University, an attack that left 147, most of them students, dead. Thereafter, we saw some sort of, um, what do you call it, comprehensive focus by the security forces in ensuring that we shield, especially the capital, uh, from such kind of attacks. It has been quite a, a quiet season of a few years, but now we are back here and you, you hear over the citizens, the eyewitnesses, saying that uh, we have spotted this car a few times. Where did we drop the ball? Uh, some, we cannot be so sure about our security. Because you cannot say that you can 100% secure premises from such kind of an attack. Mm -hmm. Remember, terrorists have an advantage. Whoever is planning a criminal activity has an advantage, and we normally are told that they are two minutes ahead of security forces. Mm. We only come in to react after they have carried out the attack. The way you saw yesterday, we are only being reactive. But we are supposed to be proactive, mm -hmm. and uh, we should have learned our lessons. And the fact that uh, you realize that the method that we used in uh, Garissa University, where we have active, bo uh, act active shooters yeah. getting into the premises and carrying out an attack, the same happened at Westgate, and now we're doing it again at DUCI 2, D2, mm -hmm. then it means there's something that we've not learned. Mm -hmm. Making sure that these people do not have access to weapons. It's very clear that uh, these weapons are easily accessible to the terrorists. The fact that they can bring in bomb-making ingredients, bomb-making materials, make the bombs, and carry them to the scene of attack, yeah, to the target identified, clearly also shows that there's a lapse in security. Uh, something needs to be done towards that area. And as I've said also, mm. we've not utilized popular intelligence from members of the public. Mm. We've not sensitized the public on exactly how they are supposed to share information mm -hmm. with the security agencies in case mm -hmm. they see something that is suspicious. Because this gentleman should have reported this matter to the police. Right. Because if he looked at this activity and saw some suspicion, these were indicators already. Mm. And anytime there's a, this kind of attack, indicators are always there. If you look very closely, if you are trained in observation, you'll be able to pick up things that not add up, mm. things that look abnormal. Right. And we need to have very many members of the public uh, given these skills so that we can be able to preempt these kind of attacks. Speaking of intel or intelligence that may come, from the previous main attacks, major attacks that we have had in this country, every time after it has happened, we always hear of, uh, like the Garissa University attack we had of uh, the administration of the university had uh, spoken to the security team of uh, Garissa County several times, but um, their calls for more security was never heeded. Uh, so there are always some signs. Have indicators. Had, we, we, we call them indicators. Yes, indicators. They are always there. Have, have you heard of uh, tangible indicators in this D2, apart from this car that had been uh, cited at least three times? I think what we ha I heard was some kind of blanket uh, 
warning, and this came from an international media house. It said that uh, there is an imminent attack in Nairobi, mm -hmm. meaning there was intel out there. When was that? Uh, that was on Monday, Al Jazeera. If you watched Al Jazeera on Monday, they said there's an imminent attack for in Nairobi. And on Tuesday, we have this attack. So basically, there are some people here who had this information and might have shared it out with the international, with the international media houses, mm. and then they went ahead and broadcasted it. But some, if you have a proper uh, uh, intelligence collection system, you will find that the indicators are always there. And it's difficult. And, and, uh, okay. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I've said, terrorism evolves. And uh, if you look uh, at, at, at the attacks that have been carried out quite recently, not only in Kenya, but even in more advanced countries, right. we, had the attack, we had the attack in Belgium, we had the attack in Paris, we had the attack in, 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 in Berlin. Uh, these are well-developed countries, even in London. Mm. These are well-developed countries and they have systems that are working. But still, the terrorists were able to penetrate their security systems and carry out attacks. Mm. But the difference here is the method or the tactics used. Okay. And when you look at, um, I know it's difficult to get into the mind of a terrorist, but um, for this planning stage to actually succeed, that you plan, you, you have identified the target, you have surveyed the target, you have planned, and you have actually carried out the attack, how long would it take? And how secure is it that uh, no information le leaks to the target country? If you look at the way the terrorists operate, they operate in what we call a cell system. For example, the people who are sent out to identify a target are not the people that will come in to carry out the surveillance. Mm. So they operate in, cell, uh, in a cell system and you'll find that one cell might have up to four members. And this first cell does not even know the membership of the second cell. Mm. The target identifiers do not know the membership of the cell that now will be sent to do the surveillance. The surveillance cell will not know the members of the team that will be planning this, but the, the, the attack. Mm -hmm. And the planners will not even know the attackers. So it's very, very, very difficult because if you get the person who is doing surveillance, he will not lead you to the attackers or the planners. He will not lead you to the people that identified the target. So dealing with, the, with, 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 with terrorism is a little bit dynamic and it needs a proper intelligence collection team mm. that will now will be able now to handle this situation right from identifying the, uh, the, 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 the people that are going to identify the target, the mm. people that will move in now to do surveillance down to the attackers. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that even most advanced countries like the US have not been able to totally mm -hmm. eradicate terrorism in their, in their, in their, in their, in their yard. So, so you don't know how long it will take? I don't know how long it will take because terrorism has been with us for quite a long time. Right. And as I've said, it evolves. Mm -hmm. So what is worrying me is that here we still have a situation whereby the old tactic that was, has always been used mm -hmm. is still being used uh, okay. in, in 2019. Mm -hmm. And if you look at countries where security has been tightened, security has been hardened, now they have moved to simpler ways of carrying out these attacks. For example, okay. going into a club, mm -hmm. shooting people or using uh, knifing, uh, stabbing people, mm -hmm. uh, you'll find that now instead of uh, they cannot be able to access bomb making material, they will hire a truck, ram it, ram it into a group of people. You see, that is the evolution that you're talking yeah. about here. But in Kenya, you still have a group that will have bomb, bomb making material, make the bomb and deliver the bomb to the targeted area. Mm. It clearly shows that there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of enhancing security in this country. And when you look at uh, the CCTV footage we have and also some of the pictures that we have, there's a still photo of um, one of the attackers, a uh, light-skinned uh, guy. How fast can our security forces identify that face and actually trace, tra trace him to whomever he is and even the members of public to know such a face? Uh, it's not easy because uh, probably this is a person who is a foreigner. Somebody has just crossed the border into Kenya to come and carry out this particular attack. We might not have his biometrics. And that's why I've said that it's very difficult to identify these people because they are people, the planners might be inside Kenya, they might be Kenyans, we cannot rule that one out. Mm -hmm. The identifiers of the target might be Kenyans. The group that did the surveillance mm. might have been locals mm -hmm. because you find that we have locals that have already been uh, working with the, with the, with the, with the enemy. Mm. But the attackers, these are people that might have just come in from outside our borders, direct to the target. So we might not even have their biometrics here. 
and it's very very difficult for us to identify him and if you look at the way these guys uh, behaved he did not he exposed himself and as you said earlier probably the mission was i'll not get out of here alive mm. so there's no need of even hiding my face there's so no they need just expose themselves yeah okay i understand why he has a question but even as he asks that please be thinking about uh, uh, the what these machines are these guns are Wahiga? Indeed, some quite an enlightening conversation you're having there with uh, George Musamali. Bwana Musamali, there is a Kenyan on social media who's asking a rather interesting question. He reckons, uh, it's a question comment, is it time to introduce terrorism preparedness and response training to everyone in Kenya, from primary schools to corporates? So it's standard procedure in corporates to have fire drills, for example. Uh, and if you lived in parts of the world where there were earthquakes and things like that, then there would be earthquake drills, right? Terrorism drills. Is it time for Kenya to seriously consider that, to make it a policy, to have parliament discuss that and make that and formalize it uh, so that in the um, sad event that something like that was to happen, people know step one, two, three, four is what I need to do. Uh, it's what we call emergency preparedness. Mm -hmm. As we do uh, fire safety drills, we should also do active shooter drills. Active shooter drills. Active shooter drills. You mm -hmm. cannot say, blanketly say that uh, we train people on how to deal with terrorism. They cannot be able to do that. Right. But the situation we are facing right now at uh, Duce 2, D2, is an active shooter situation. And remember, we tried, uh, uh, Strathmore University tried such a drill, and it failed because they yeah, were not well terrible. prepared. Uh, people had not been trained on what to do at what particular time. So it should be a policy that any building that houses people, a number of people, there should always be drills of an active shooter because this is a threat that is there. This is a threat that is life. Uh, we cannot say that is. We cannot say that we are hundred percent sure we are not going to have another active shooter situation in this country. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been talking about this for quite some time since 20, uh, uh, 2013 after the Westgate attack. We've always been advocating that this is something that should be made policy, and. It should be enforced mm -hmm. by an authority, making sure that every, after every four months, mm -hmm. uh, the premises where we have a good number of people working mm -hmm. should have an active shooter drill. And okay. that way, we will be able now to save a lot of lives. For example, I was receiving information from people inside the building. They were telling me, we are holed up in a building. What should we do? We are in a, I'm in a toilet. What should I do? What, we are five what, of what us. What were you telling them? I, I was giving them instructions or telling them, keep calm. And I was passing this information to Mr. Philip Opio, mm. who is the director of, uh, uh, director of uh, disaster management in the National Police Service. Mm -hmm. okay. I was in communication with him, and he was uh, passing this information to the team that was uh, carrying out the operation. So people should know what to do in case of an active shooter situation. And there are several things that we advise people to do. And the first one has always been look for a safe place and hide yourself if that is possible. Mm -hmm. If it's not possible and there's a route you can use to escape the premises, then do it. Mm -hmm. But number three, if you have no alternative, fight. Because at the end of it, these people have one intention to kill you. Kill you. Whether you fight or you don't fight, they're going to kill you. And this is something that you need to do. You should be prepared for that eventuality. So make sure that you are in a building, there's an active shooter, uh, shooter situation, look for a place to conceal yourself. Right. Not possible, find a way out. Not possible, you've been accosted by the attackers, then defend yourself. Wow. It's, you just don't want to be in such a situation. It's, it's very it's scary. difficult, it's scary, and it's traumatizing, and especially for families that are still looking for their loved ones. Their last time that they were together is when they were leaving, maybe for work or living uh, for the day. Uh, we're still waiting for information on the situation on the ground. We'll be uh, crossing over to some of these centers, including uh, at the Riverside Drive, to speak to Hassan Mugambi and uh, Stephen Letter.